Welcome back, my name is Carrie, and today we need to talk about what the heck happened to manufactured homes this year. I've been in the manufactured home industry since 2009, and no other year even comes close in comparison when we zoom out and examine everything that happened in 12 short months. To be perfectly honest with you, up until about December 2019, the manufactured home industry was kind of boring. A great industry, but there wasn't nearly as many outside factors affecting the day-to-day -day operations. I remember getting mad when the factory would send out a price increase once per year. That's it. One time per year. I could have had this channel, done one video per year, and everyone would be pretty much up to speed with everything going on. Now, things are happening all the time. Since the fudge hit the fan in 2020, prices literally have to be reviewed daily, new companies are popping up it seems like weekly, and trends are shifting monthly. In order to try and predict what will happen with manufactured modular and prefab homes next year, we first have to take a look back and assess what just happened because a lot changed. It was a monster year. What I'm going to do is look at some of the big changes that rocked the industry this year and how I think the effects will roll over into 2022, so let's do it. The single biggest change that has in turn led to pretty much every other change happening with the industry, and there's a lot, is prices. Like I mentioned, in any old normal year, we would get zero to two price increases for the entire year, usually two to three percent. Reasonable, right? Definitely not the case this year. I went back through all of the bulletins sent out since January and get this, 12 price increases this year ranging from 1.5% to 5.5% for a grand total of a 33% increase. I think that's probably more than the previous 11 years going all the way back to 2009 when I first got into the industry. That's pretty crazy. The increased notices usually came with a general explanation of what was causing that specific increase and the most common were lumber for the first part of the year, supply chain for the second part of the year, and the labor shortage sprinkled in for good measure. It's really easy to get upset and blame the dealer selling the home or for me to blame the factory building the home, but at the end of the day, it is what it is and there's not a thing we can do about it. Just like I'm laying out all the increases I got this year for you, I've had friends at factories do the same for me with notices from their suppliers. So basically what it comes down to is because of the current state of the situation, the cost of everything has gone up. I realize this is stating the obvious, but I still think it could be worthwhile information for anyone in the market to buy who's trying to figure out what the heck is going on. This is usually the part in the video where someone comments, inflation, save yourself eight minutes, or corporate greed. But as someone very, very wise once said to me, that's showbiz, baby. It would be naive of me to assume that all of the increases received from the factory this year were exact cost increases. When there's this much demand, I think it's fairly safe to assume that they're trying to increase their margins as well, but I think that's easier said than done with the amount of volatility in building materials right now. The level of demand we're seeing for manufactured modular and prefab homes right now has led to other major changes within the industry. The manufactured home industry is in full-on expansion mode. They can't build homes fast enough for all the people trying to buy. The door has been left wide open for new builders to march on into the industry and have customers pretty much as soon as they build their first home. And that's happening. There's a new factory under construction literally 12 minutes from my house and I was talking to another guy in Toronto who opened one and he's already outgrown his first space in less than a year. Knowing this and not wanting to lose market share, the big dogs have officially come off the porch and are expanding their footprints in a massive way. In a press release from July, the CEO of Cavco said, the timing of this expansion to our production footprint could not be better. At a time when demand for our homes is very high, we will now be able to build more with an improved capability to respond to changing customer trends. Increasing production capacity, improving working conditions, and updating our homes are a key to keeping up with the current demand. And this addition checks all the boxes in helping us to achieve that. He was referring to a 22,000 square foot expansion to the Palm Harbor factory in Fort Worth, Texas, but really, that's just the tip of the iceberg. Kevco is building a 118,000 square foot park model factory in Glendale, Arizona. Champion Skyline is opening a 270,000 square foot facility in Navasoto, Texas. Boxable built a 170,000 square foot factory in Las Vegas. And Plant Prefab is about to break ground on a new 270,000 square foot facility just south of Bakersfield, California. That's 850,000 square feet of production space for factory built homes added this year alone that I know of. If there's still a shortage of homes when all that production space is up and running, and I think there will be, 
guess what? They'll build more. One thing I've noticed about the manufactured home industry is it tends to be somewhat boom or bust over the course of a year. What I mean by that is most factories are slower over the winter with most dealers ordering homes to be delivered in early spring to late fall. When dealers all order homes for the same part of the year, the factories, trucking companies, setup crews, and tradespeople all end up being slam busy for part of the year and slow for part of the year. I've witnessed this happen just about every normal year, but what's happening right now is things got busy in the spring of 2020 and didn't slow down. It was flat out through last winter, all of 2021, and will be flat out through this winter, so we're seeing a boom that transcends the seasonal norms. That hasn't happened since before I got into the industry, and it's leading everyone to expanding their production output. Looking forward, I think the price increases and shortage of production capacity will shape the trends we're going to see in 2022. Building new facilities to increase output takes time, so I think this year factories will be looking for more ways to increase production and affordability within their current buildings. One way they can do that that's already starting to happen is to simply offer less. Less floor plans, less options, less customization, less everything to keep the builds as simple as possible and streamline the process. This concept has actually led to an entirely new segment of home that's built on standardization and repetition that's found a place in the market as the new affordable option. I'm talking about companies like Boxbowl, Nestron, and now Roombus who take production efficiency to the extreme and offer less options to simplify the build process. I don't know if you've noticed, but these companies have been getting a lot of attention lately. So if I had to guess, I think we'll see more similar companies entering the market in 2022. The second trend I expect to see in 2022 is smaller homes. With the increased prices, people may no longer be able to afford the triple wide they had their eye on, so an easy way to cut down the cost and keep the purchase affordable is to just buy something smaller. There are some great three bedroom double wide plans under 1200 square feet. I live in Canada where prices have been higher for a long time, and one of my most popular floor plans has always been a small three bedroom double wide. 2021 in the manufactured home industry was by far the most exciting year I've ever seen. Things were constantly changing. We saw increased prices, new companies, more factories, and adjustments to production in an attempt to improve speed and affordability. I honestly think 2022 is going to have even more going on. People have realized there is a serious affordable housing shortage and problems equal opportunity, so I think we're going to see more new companies on the way. One of my favorite things about the manufactured home industry is its ability to adapt. So production will continue to increase until one day, and I have no idea when that day is going to be, it flips and all of a sudden we have more homes available than people who want to buy them. I'll be looking for indicators that we've hit the turning point and will keep you posted right here on my YouTube channel when I see them. That's all I've got for today. If you like manufactured home videos, make sure to subscribe to my channel because I've got new ones coming out every single week. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.